Okay. So maybe at this stage here, we could actually um, see what, what happens. Um, so if we do that, what do we have to do? We have to go to the, actually the same code we were looking at uh, in the k-means uh, lesson group. And we now set parallelism equal to two. Remember, we set these basic parameters, max mean, parallelism, number of iterations, and threshold. We'll keep max mean to be one, and to make it more interesting, num iterations to be one. But we'll set parallelism equal to two. Then we do uh, um, select all and a copy. And then we put this into our IPython window. And I think have to do the copy. And it's now running away in the, with the parallelism equal to two. And if everything's right, it should give you similar answers to the parallelism equal to one case. Here they pop. Remember, we have eight windows. We'll just look at those windows to see they don't look uh, silly. Um, so what is this top window? That's uh, the case of. That's uh, the case of what is it? Very large clusters, four, clustered into four. It looks a perfect job has been done. It's got the right answer. So that one is fine. What do we have here? Remember, we're running with iterations equal to one. So there are some greater probability than you would normally have if you ran with iterations of 20 to get a um, distorted answer. And um, here we're running with very large clusters and um, clustered into two, and this looks pretty sensible. The top two, slightly bigger cluster, bigger um, initial clusters are joined together in the found cluster, and the bottom two are joined together. That's again probably the uh, natural answer. So this is this um, parallelism equals two is suddenly giving reasonable answers here. Now we have <coughs> four, uh, the four uh, small clusters and clustered into four, and the answer is exactly reasonable. Each cluster, each of the found clusters is equal to one of the original clusters, which are now completely separate. Remember, we had an interesting discussion of the um, what happens when you take the four small clusters and um, Plus them into into two, you've got these two solutions. Either the natural one, which you would have guessed to be best, which was pairs, but I showed actually the one and three was in fact um, in some limit of uh, zero size original clusters, actually the optimal. And you can see it found the one and three case here. This cluster here is um, found as a single cluster, and these three are joined together with this center as the other cluster. Uh, let's see what we get on this one. Here we have eight clusters. We have the top two, each divided into two, and the bottom one divided into three, and one divided into one. This this is the the so-called large clusters, not the very large, just large. And um, this is. Not obviously the best, but it's not an unreasonable solution. There's no, um, it uh, looks okay. Now we have six clusters in the case of the large radius case. And uh, this is certainly pretty reasonable. Each of the bottom clusters uh, is found exactly correct. Each of the top clusters is divided into two. That's probably the solution we think is most plausible. And here we have the, um, what is this one? This is the large, cl large cl case um, <coughs> clustered into four, and it's sort of perfect. Uh, each of the original clusters is found by the, uh, in the, by k-means.
And we have one more to go. Let's see how this looks. Um, these are large clusters. Original generated large clusters divided into clusters into two, and now we've got uh, these two joined together and these two joined together. And of course, whether it chooses these two or well, these two is certainly <coughs> not obvious which is best, and uh, this is at least a reasonable solution. All right, so we found parallelism equals two, got reasonable answers, and that's all built into the, exactly the same code we were using in the original uh, K-means uh, technology lecture. All right, let's return to the um, um, All right, now we're returning to the uh, PowerPoint. And in fact, we reached the last slide, so let's just go to this as the last slide. And um, the, what we just did is trivial to divide, uh, to do in the P way parallelism for any value of P. You divide the data into P parts. The results we showed in the uh, MapReduce uh, lesson group actually uh, went up to uh, quite a lot of cores, 256, so 250, dividing into 256 parts. Um, now you have to run each of those parts separately with all, with each part having uh, one over pth of the data. So if it's um, just parallelism of two, each has half the data, but they have all the centers. The centers have contributions from each of the, um, each of the data. And then you need to do, uh, as we saw in the reduction already, you sum the, uh, the um, contributions to the centers from each uh, process, and you sum the contribution to distortion uh, conversion criterion. Or you actually max it if you, for the, um, the max version of the convergence criterion. The maps can run in parallel. Reduce, you can decide to run either sequentially, or if you have large levels of the parallelism, you use some parallelism there. And um, we've, we've already stressed many times the difference between the sequential code and the map reduce code, just a very simple movement of the division by the total number of points out of the initial calculation and put it right at the end. So thank you very much. That's the end of our discussion of map reduce applied to k-means in Python. Thank you very much. This is Jeffrey Fox signing out.